Hey y'all, this is Darren Van Dam, and welcome back to Flick Connection, where in less time than you normally spend scrolling for something to watch, I'm gonna tell you about 10 of the most surprisingly good movies released in 2023. So full disclosure, I haven't seen everything released in 2023. There's still a handful of movies I'd like to see, most of them things that came out later in the year. Anatomy of a Fall and American Fiction being two that come to mind. Deadbeat dads, rappers, crack. You said you wanted black stuff. That's black, right? I see what you're doing. And also, right off the bat, I want to say that I have not seen Godzilla Minus One, but I did make the mistake of taking my son to the theater. We saw about half of it, and he got a little too freaked out, and we had to leave. Um, that's not something that's ever happened before, but he's almost eight years old. He's really into Jurassic Park, and uh, I thought this movie would be in line with it, and it was just a little bit too intense. That said, I was blown away by the first half of the movie and cannot wait to see the rest. Not only that, everyone is raving about Godzilla Minus One, including Steven Spielberg, who doesn't really speak out about movies very often, unless something really stands out and Godzilla Minus One has made some serious waves this year. I say all that to say I have no doubt that Godzilla Minus One would be ranked fairly high on this list, but since I haven't seen it, I'll hold my review for later. But my official number 10 pick on this list is kind of a doozy, and really not for everybody, Joe Lynch's Suitable Flesh. Now, this is a raunchy, kind of disgusting movie, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is based on H.P. Lovecraft, and it's directed by Joe Lynch, who's most famous for Mayhem and Everly, two movies I've highly recommended, and I will say, they're movies I think I enjoyed more than Suitable Flesh, but I was still really surprised at how graphic this movie was. I was surprised at some of the things Heather Graham was willing to do on camera, and also surprised at how weird the movie is and how much I enjoyed it. This is a real strange one that just kind of manages to work. I really recommend this for people who love weird horror movies. In fact, I missed out not seeing this in a crowded festival theater. That had to be the best environment to see this movie, way better than watching it alone in my house. Next up, I've got a run-of-the-mill action movie that surprised me by being way better than your average run-of-the-mill action movie. Plane stars Gerard Butler in kind of a lower budget action movie. In fact, this is that genre where they're picking these aging actors, throwing them in an action movie that's kind of half-assed and then it, no one's entertained and no one's happy. But Plane, the setup for it sounds exactly like what I just described, except it actually ends up being a solid action flick. Gerard Butler plays an airline pilot. He's forced to land a plane on a deserted island where there's actually a war zone going on. Everyone's taken hostage. It's kind of wild stuff. Again, it is lower budget action, but as someone who watches a ton of low budget action movies, Plane is a lot better than most. All right, one of the more intense dramas from this past year that I think was criminally overlooked is BlackBerry. There is a free wireless internet signal all across North America and nobody has figured out how to use it. It's like the force. Sorry, have you seen Star Wars? No. This is the story of the creation of the BlackBerry and kind of how it revolutionized things right before the invention of the iPhone. And the story of how it was created and how the business was run is actually a pretty wild one. Not only that, but the movie itself is packed with comedic actors. You've got Jay Baruchel playing the kind of the lead here, and Glenn Howerton from It's Always Sunny is playing the CEO of BlackBerry. And while there are funny moments in the movie, this is not an all out comedy. This is a pretty intense drama that does take kind of a light look at it, but the things that are happening to the main characters are all fairly intense. And again, the story of the rise and eventual fall of BlackBerry is way more fascinating than I would have imagined. Why are they paying you? I shouldn't say. They're paying me $10 million. Yeah, me too. Longtime subscribers know I review a ton of Netflix movies every year. Only two made this list. My next pick being They Cloned Tyrone. Now, this one almost didn't make the list only because I expected this one to be pretty good. I had heard some fantastic things leading up to its release, so I wasn't completely surprised, 
but I will say I was still genuinely surprised how solid of a Netflix original this ended up being. Now the movie itself has a fairly silly setup and it does have quite a bit of levity to it. It is a fairly funny movie, but it also has this really slick style and an interesting angle on this sort of sci-fi thing. I don't want to say exactly what's going on and they cloned Tyrone, but they almost tell you in the title. Jamie Foxx is exceptional in the movie, and the movie has something to say. It's not just silliness, but it doesn't forget to be entertaining, which is, you know, so important with a movie like this. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. Honestly, had it not been a Netflix original, this is probably one I would have enjoyed in the theater and potentially bought on Blu-ray. Excuse me, kind sir, but if you could pour me to the elevator that leads down to the Fiki Laboratory, I'll the back door. I'll be out your atmosphere. Let's get my Another one that almost didn't make the list just because of, you know, my level of surprise, but I will say I was still genuinely surprised by John Wick 4, mainly with just how wild and over the top it was, even compared to the first three, but also how far they have leaned in to sort of the full on flavor of John Wick. If you watch the first movie to the fourth, there's kind of an evolution and it really is just them leaning harder and harder into this exaggerated style, not just with the stunt choreography, but also just the colors and the lights. All of that stuff gets ramped up with each movie and by the time you get to the fourth, you really get just this dazzling display of an action movie. I will admit, John Wick 4 is kind of overlong and almost exhausting. I feel like some of the fight sequences could have maybe benefited from being edited down, but these are still just some of the most incredible stunt showcases you're gonna see, and it's because they've been created by longtime stuntmen who know not only what looks cool, but know kind of what they can get away with and pack into a movie, and John Wick does stunt work better than almost anyone else, and I thought the fourth one was just sort of an amazing way to tie all of those four together. Now some of you might have expected this next one on the list. I do recommend a fair amount of horror here on the channel. Speaking of horror, if you like this shirt, you can pick it up at DarrenVanDam.com. I've got a bunch of fairly new designs over there, and they're all on just insanely soft, 100% cotton t-shirts. I actually designed these with my wife and I'm pretty proud of the way that they turned out. So if you wanna support the show, go check out darrenvandam.com slash shop. But speaking of horror, I saw several horror movies this year that I enjoyed, but the one that surprised me the most was definitely Talk To Me. Talk To Me. Now, this movie did have a lot of buzz about it. I'm not just sort of unearthing this thing here right now. But on top of me genuinely enjoying the movie and being surprised by its premise, it was also directed by two fellow YouTubers, which was not only inspiring, but also very exciting to see that someone within my creative space is able to go into the Hollywood realm and make something very different than what Hollywood has been making. Talk to me does follow some standard beats, but for the most part, it feels like something very new and different, not just in its concept. The overall tone of the movie felt fresh to me as well, which is something sorely lacking from Hollywood today. So many movies they release have such a feeling of sameness about them, and it really has gotten to be a problem. Talk To Me was one of those movies that managed to cut through that and establish something new that I have no doubt Hollywood will replicate over and over again until we're tired of that as well. Now, something else Hollywood has been doing like nonstop is making these big, expensive, CGI-filled, PG-13 action-adventure movies. Marvel movies, Star Wars, the list just goes on. It's most of what Hollywood is putting their money into nowadays, and it all has this sense of sameness about it, with an exception of one that came out this year, Dungeons and Dragons. Now, full disclosure, I am not a Dungeons and Dragons guy. I've never played it. I'm only really familiar with it through pop culture, movies, TV, video games. And as someone who has no real connection to the game, I thought not only was this movie thoroughly entertaining, it was one of the funniest movies I saw all year. And don't get me wrong, not accidentally. This is a comedy movie that is genuinely funny. 
I would say if you enjoy the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, this is close in terms of its tone and humor. It's different, but close. So if you passed on this because you're not into Dungeons or Dragons, I get it. Uh, I wasn't really either, but again, thoroughly surprised putting it in the number four spot on this list. The Orifice? I'll go lost. All right, my number three pick on this list is a doozy. It technically falls into the horror category, but it's so weird and off-putting. Uh, it's, it's the most terrifying thing on this list and really easily the most disturbing, Infinity Pool. Now this is from director Brandon Cronenberg, who is the son of David Cronenberg, the director who's done some of the weirdest, most just disturbing movies ever produced, and his son is following in his footsteps, but he's doing so with his own style, and I'm very intrigued by what he's been doing. A couple years ago, he came out with a movie titled Possessor, that's another one I've recommended, but with caveats, it's very weird and kind of hard to get into, but I did enjoy that. I liked Infinity Pool even more, and I was genuinely surprised at how much I liked his movie. Now, I will say it again, this one is incredibly disturbing. The setup for this one is you've got rich people on vacation. When they commit a crime that's punishable by death, they're given the option to pay to have a clone made to be executed for them. Now, all of this is metaphorical. It's not really meant to be taken very seriously, but Alexander Skarsgård stars in this, and the road that his character goes on at that point is a wild trip, but the movie itself actually has a surprising amount to say. It's got a cool style to it that I personally loved, and then Mia Goth is really a just showstopper in this movie. She steals every scene she's in. I've enjoyed her in other movies. Her performance in this is over the top in the best way possible, and I've only seen this movie once. It was early in 2023, and her performance is burned into my brain. Okay, I am gonna give some mild spoilers on this next one, but I'll tell you when they're coming. Ballerina is the other Netflix original that I picked for this list. It comes from South Korea, and it's one of the cooler action movies in its genre I've ever seen, and I'm gonna explain why. Now, if you were to watch the trailer, this looks like your typical female, badass, kicking everybody's butt type of a movie, and there is that. Yun Young Seo is the lead here, and she's one of my favorite actors working today. I've just really discovered her this year. If you want to get into movies from South Korea, check out anything that she's been in. Not only are her performances great, but she just happens to be in some really exceptional movies. But not only do I love the look and the style of Ballerina, but it does something other action movies like this don't. You've got a fairly small female protagonist who's also a very capable fighter, but <laughs> when she comes up against other foes who know how to fight, she's clearly outmatched. She's up against a guy who's just got a lot of size on her, and she has to think her way through it, and also, spoiler alert, she has to escape. She has to run away. I never see that in these female-led action movies where the main character becomes overpowered more than once and has to kind of escape and regroup. That is what would happen in a situation like this. This little woman's not gonna be able to overpower people. And I get it, when it happens in other movies, I, I enjoy that too. It's, it's fantasy, it's fun to watch. Ballerina does that, but also takes kind of a realistic slant on it, while also having this sort of colorful, over-the-top style. I really enjoyed everything about it. I thought the villains were a little over the top in a cool way. I thought the, the original score was really exceptional for a Netflix movie. So if you generally like my recommendations, I can't recommend Ballerina enough. And then if you ever wondered what you would get if you mixed Inglorious Bastards with a John Wick movie, you'd get my number one pick, Sisu. Now, even though it's my number one pick, this movie was technically released in 2022, but it made its global release in 2023. Now, in this movie, you follow a prospector who uncovers a lot of gold out in this real deserted area during World War II, and as he's trying to bring the gold home, he runs into some vicious Nazis who want to take it from him and kill him. From that moment, the movie turns into this wild action revenge 
movie. It's brutal, it's over the top, it's actually really polished. It's got a beautiful look to it. But above all of that, lots of movies have all of that, I thought every single scene in this movie was incredibly clever. I never knew what this guy was about to do next. And again, I watch so many movies, I'm often just able to predict the patterns with things. And Sisu surprised me scene for scene. Now, it does go to some ridiculous places, but I personally don't mind that if it stays relatively grounded and self-aware, and Sisu did that. It was one of the most entertaining movies I saw all year, and was honestly surprised at how well the movie actually works. If you're the least bit interested in that concept, you know, Inglorious Bastards meets John Wick, I'm telling you, Sisu delivers better than you could imagine, making it my number one pick on this list. If you, found any movies this year to be particularly surprising, be sure to let us all know in the comments down below so we can get some extra movie recommendations out of it. For further movie recommendations though, you can go again to my site, darrenvandam.com and sign up for my newsletter, it's free. And every month I send one or two emails with additional movie recommendations. So just part of my mission to make sure you never run out of good movies to watch. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special episode and you will see me on the next one.